And we're ready. Hello, yeah. world. I'm Jeremy, and this is Stanimir in Bulgaria. Hello. Uh, Stanimir, why don't, why don't you introduce yourself and what you're hoping to get out of this? Hello, my name is Stanimir, and I'm from Bulgaria. I'm certainly studying computing in my <coughs> local town. It's just finished my second year. And basically, I'm a front end developer, mostly trying <coughs> building websites, trying to build some web apps with HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Okay. So, how far have you gone with JavaScript? What's like the coolest thing that you that you've written with JavaScript? Mm -hmm. I think there isn't any. I have some small plugins with jQuery, but which I built for my gaming website. But that's all. At the okay. moment, at the moment I'm <clears throat> I want to learn a little more JavaScript so I can build web apps like uh, programs like Skype, but for the browser with file sharing and such. Okay, so you want to make more of like Kind of more like a high-end app where it's, it's got like video conferencing and you know a lot, a lot of real-time communication. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, that's certainly it's it, it's a big challenge, and I've never personally written anything quite like that. But you know uh, the te te the technologies are there to do it. Um, so you're set in that regard. Um, so if you have this vision of of, of building like a Skype-like thing, let's just kind of like keep that in mind. Um, have you done much research on the different types of APIs that are available to you? Uh, well, I tried to build such app with um, WebSockets and Node.js with Node.js server and WebSocket. Okay. Wrote, wrote the skeleton, but I couldn't establish my web server with Node.js. Had some issues, but I will try soon, very soon again. Okay. Well, as far as like doing video streaming or anything like that, um, you probably don't want to do that yourself. I know that there's a, a few third-party services that you can use. I remember for like a hackathon a few years back, I used something called Talkbox. It's T O K B O X, and I I can find the link for it later, and I'll put it on the uh, the YouTube video when, once it's posted. But that's a way of getting um, video communication between <coughs> two users. Um, and another way still is this newer technology that I haven't used yet. It's called WebRTC, and RTC stands for real-time communication, I think. I heard about that technology. I want to include it into, uh, into my web app as well. Yeah, and the way that video conferencing is, uh, um, as I understand it, has, has traditionally worked is that you know, two users like you and me are talking to each other, with, uh, you know, with a video chat, but it's going to a third, like a third-party server, and then it's just kind of like it's proxying the information back and forth between the, the different users. And my understanding of WebRTC is that it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so there's not that third-party server. So like the data from my computer is going directly to the data on your computer. Yes. Uh, I could be mistaken on that, but that's my understanding of it. Again, I haven't used it. I've just read a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that you could experiment with if you don't want to involve a third-party uh, service or server or, or anything like that. Um, so that's where I begin with that. Um, and as far as like having real-time communication is concerned, um, there you, you'll want to use something called WebSockets. Have you heard of that? Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Again, that's another thing that I haven't used, but I just kind of know about. And you probably want to use uh, something called Socket IO or Socket.io, which is a library for. Um, yeah. I know about that library, and okay. I even install it, install it with my not inside my Node.js server. Was it working for you? Um, yes, but the actual web socket wanted me to install Python or some some other mo some. Another model. Huh. I'm not. There was a problem with the actual web socket. Okay. It was a long time ago, so I can't remember actually. Right. So, what would your next step be to to building the, this this grand vision of an app that you have? Or what's the next thing that you don't know how to do? Well, basically, I I. <clears throat> have low ex um, 
really well experience with JavaScript. So I want to get started with objects and arrays and such so I can have so I um, so I can gain more knowledge about okay, so that. It sounds like more of like um, a foundational understanding of JavaScript itself. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah, so d don't necessarily worry about... It, so it sounds like building this, this grand vision of an app is a little bit of a ways off. It sounds like you have to focus more on the basics first, which is fine. Uh, and a lot of people try and skip the basics and just jump right into the, the more advanced things. And you can do that, but I think that ends up being less beneficial over time. So my advice would be to kind of like take it a little bit slower and just learn and get a better grasp of the fundamentals first because that can be surprisingly difficult to learn and it, it can be surprisingly beneficial in the long run if you have a, a good understanding of that. So you, you wanted to learn, I guess, more about the different da data structures that JavaScript offers. Have you used another programming language before JavaScript? No. Only I have worked only with <coughs> HTML5 CSS3, JavaScript, a little MySQL, and PHP. Okay. So the language that you mentioned, J JavaScript is most like PHP in, in, just by the nature of what it does. Uh, I mean, they're not the same language. They're not very similar in, in, in how you work with them. Um, but the, the paradigms of, like, you know, programming behavior, whereas, like, with HTML, you're, you're, you're defining a structure. In CSS, you're defining uh, the style of something. In MySQL, you're you're working with data. JavaScript and PHP are more like um, you're 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 trying to define behavior. Um, so, are you comfortable with arrays and objects then? Mm, excuse me. Are you uh, so you said that you're not quite comfortable with arrays and objects? Yes. Okay. So let's start with an array first. Um, an array is just like a, col uh, a collection of pieces of data. Um, in, uh, in, in a lot of like typed languages, all the pieces of data must be the same type. So you can have like an array of ints or an array of, of strings or booleans or whatever, and, they, and you, can't, you can't mix and match. Uh, but arrays in JavaScript are, are, are a lot more flexible. Um, basically, you, uh, you, you can have as many uh, different types of data as you want and as much as you want in a single array and you just access it via an index. Uh, does that kind of make sense? Yes, actually it does. Okay, cool. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the, the best visual to, um, to, to use for this and it's kind of, you could kind of think of it like a, uh, like a, milk, a milk carton, or I'm sorry, uh, a carton of eggs. So you've got like a carton of eggs and each one has like a little comp com compartment in it yeah. Uh, each one has an egg. And uh, you can have, imagine like a, a, an egg carton that has as many, that, that can have like a variable number of, of slots you can add to and remove as much as you want and you can put whatever fits in that, in that little egg slot. Mm. Yeah. That's okay. kind of the, the, the mentality, although there's really no size limit on what you can fit in a, a certain compartment of these little slots. It's just, it's a container for, you know, uh, a group of data. And it's, yeah. it's indexed by like a number like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just numeric. Uh, yeah. And so does that kind of make sense? It's may maybe not the most straightforward way to explain it. Um, yeah, I'm, I, got, I got the point. Okay. Um, and an object in JavaScript, uh, at least in terms of JavaScript's, you know, concept of things, is it's a key value pair. Have you heard of that term before? Key value. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, so it's an, another term for it is like a map or a dictionary or the idea is that it's like an array in that it's a, uh, a container of data, like, like many pieces of, of different types of data or the same, um, but instead of being accessed via an index, like a number starting with zero, like arrays zero, one, two, three, uh, um, um, in, uh, a dictionary or an object or a map is this concept of addressing things by a string. So every compartment has a name. So you get an object that has uh, a property named Stanimir and a property named Jeremy, and those point to different things. 
Whereas with an array, it might just be zero and one. Mm. So think of it like an array, but with each uh, with, with each element having a name rather than a, just a number. Yeah, I think I understand that. Yeah, I mean, and, and they're useful for different things. Um, but that's really the foundation of what, what what an object is in JavaScript. Like that is that's what it is at its lowest level. It's just a, a key value pair, and, and it's there's a little bit more magic to it with the, how how JavaScript does inheritance and all this other stuff. But that's like the core idea behind it. Okay. <coughs> so, okay. So you the, hopefully you have an understanding more of arrays and and, and objects. Um, do do you have an understanding of like the other data types like strings and booleans and numbers in JavaScript? Yeah, I know about those data types. I know what's a boolean. Uh, I know what's a string, integer, and such. Okay. So I think that having a solid understanding of how you know, the basic data types work in JavaScript is going to do a lot for you. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, like, so you would have these, you know, these basic data types. Where would you want to go from there? Mm, I want to try to build some small apps for websites, for example, just okay. to get started. So have you done anything yet that you can show that, that you maybe have some trouble with? Mm. Let me just a sec. Sure. Yeah, it's usually best to find out like what you've done in the past so we can figure out where you want to go with it rather than me just like throwing, you know, just general information at you. Well, I have some plugins and <coughs> JavaScript plugins combined with jQuery on my site. But they're all working fine. So basically, I have to start something new and fresh. So did you write these plugins, or did you get them from somewhere else? I wrote them by, by myself. And oh, OK. So you, so you wrote your own jQuery plugins. Yeah, like fade menu, swipes, and such. It's not a big deal. OK, well. So it sounds like you, you, you've got some decent experience. Um, trying to figure out where, uh, where you want to go with that exactly, though. Um, so you want to build like just more uh, widgets with jQuery, or um, are you trying to like learn how to structure an application? Mm, I want to learn how to structure those applications. I want okay. to, yeah. Well. As far as structuring application, it, it really depends, you know, on what you're building as to what the best approaches to build it are. Um, generally, I would try and learn uh, the model view controller pattern, or it's called MVC. Um, there's a number of projects out there that uh, kind of use this pattern in various forms. Uh, but the idea is that you, uh, it, it kind of breaks down your application into uh, three logical components. You've got the model which uh, controls, like, which uh, which encapsulates data, so like all of the the state and information of an application is com is comprised is, is contained in this one like this model concept, and then there's uh, a view which is something that just displays uh, the data of a model visually in your application, uh, and th those are the two most important parts, and then there's the controller. Uh, component, which is kind of like this interface between the model and the view. Now, a lot of the, the a lot of the uh, the big application frameworks that are being used in JavaScript today are model, view, and then something else. They don't usually they they often don't use um, uh, the controller part of things. They usually just like have something else in there. But it's the model and the view that is like the the key way to abstract how, abstract out how an application is going to work. Um, like, have you looked at Backbone at all? Mm, no, I haven't. OK. Well, there, so there's a few frameworks. Uh, the big ones are like Backbone and Ember. Uh, there's a couple others. But generally, if you want to go with what has like the most community support, which right now is Ember and Backbone, and I'm trying to think of what else. 
I mean, there, there's like Spine and uh, CanJS and like all these others, but and there's nothing wrong with them. And if you want to, you know, if, you wanna, if you're interested in them, by all means, dig into them. But personally, I like to stick with what has the most community support, which is Backbone and Ember right now. Um, and Backbone is, I think, a little bit easier to get started with because it's just it's more it's simpler and more mi it's just more minimalist, which you know appeals to some people but not others. Um, and that has a model component and a view component. It doesn't have a controller component, um, but it does have like a, a, it's got what's called collections, which is just kind of like a fancy array of of models and. There's also uh, like routers, which is just a way of you know structure uh, keeping your URL um, tied to various parts of your application. So that could be something to to look at if you want something that help you structure your application. Because if you just try and like build your own structure out of you know not knowing how other people are doing it, you might kind of build yourself into a corner. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, I have one book. Which is written by Adi Osmani, and it's mm -hmm. about backbone. Yeah. yeah. Backbone fundamentals mm -hmm. by Adi Osmani. Yeah, I think I saw that uh, a while back. It looks pretty good. It's just like a free online ebook, right? Yes, it's an online ebook. Yeah, uh, I def if you haven't read that, I definitely recommend checking that out and kind of getting to know it because it's not so much backbone is like the best tool in the world. Uh, it's more of just like it, it offers a way of structuring things. The way that I use it in, um, in, in the applications that I can use it for, it's usually mainly just to give me some basic structure to things. I don't use it too heavily. It's just to kind of create like a conventional way of, of, of structuring things that you know is consistent throughout the app, and also other people when they you know look at my code can you know hopefully figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would probably help you kind of structure an application. Well, okay, I will definitely check that book. Cool. Mm -hmm. So you've got like the fundamentals down, you've got like the data types, and you're you're kind of getting into to, to more structured like um, application development. Um, what other challenges do you think that you might have when trying to build this Skype-like app? Well. Maybe with some other HTML5 IPs like WebRTC and what was the other one? There was another one, but I can't remember its name at the moment. Was it? Uh, well, if you're trying to do um, WebRTC, would that go to like Canvas or Video? I don't. Even, I don't actually know. Canvas, yes. Canvas, okay, yeah. Canvas is a lot of fun. I've, I've done some work in Canvas. Um, and that's a lot different from the rest of HTML5, and I really like it because uh, it kind of gives you just this sandbox to do whatever you want in. Um, and it's, if you have, like, people who've done game programming in the past really like Canvas because it's very similar to the kind of methodologies and paradigms that were used in, like, Making old, well, or even really any video game, is because it's just uh, it, it's a bitmap. It's a programmable bitmap that you uh, you can draw whatever you want to. It gives you some basic uh, some basic primitive utilities like um, like you know how to, you can draw ellipses and, and lines and, and and things like that. But it gives you just enough so you can make very complex things on top of it. So you can really just draw whatever you want, like you. You're somewhat limited what you can like render in the DOM. Um, I mean, CSS is very powerful, but there's, you, you can't just. It's not practical to just start drawing arbitrary lines and curves and things like that. But that's something where. Uh, I agree. Canvas, on that. Sorry. I agree about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but Canvas is much more suited to just making arbitrary uh, graphics, and it's also where. You know things like WebGL come into play because that's uh, th that's where it renders you know what is generating uh, like for 3D graphics. If you're trying to like render a 3D model, it's going to be rendered in the canvas. Uh, and I believe that WebRTC is also uh, canvas because it's just 
again, I'm not, I'm not familiar, familiar with that API, so I can't really speak to it, but my, what, what I imagine is that it's just outputting some sort of, like, video output, and it needs to go somewhere. It's, it's just, it's outputting a data stream, and it would just, re and I think that Canvas is compatible with it, so it would just, like, render whatever video output that the WebRTC API is um, outputting. So, is, is that a little bit much? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, I will get used to it in the future, but for the moment, it, it's a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the best that I can do for you, at least you know, via video chat, is just kind of like tell you about the APIs and the and, and the things you're going to want to research, um, because it does involve like like this stuff is nothing that can be solved in just like a half hour video session, but you really do need to just kind of get into the APIs and see how they work and, you know, what would fit for your needs. But it sounds like, um, it sounds like whatever you do, you're, you're going to want to look at some sort, some way of, like, structuring the structuring application. Um, I prefer Backbone, but you might want to try Ember or AngularJS. Um, so you want to figure out how to structure something. You want to figure out how to, um, how to use the WebRTC API and you'll probably need, like, two computers to do that, or maybe, or just at least just two browsers. Um, so you can have, like, two video feeds, and I don't know what's involved with that. And you're going to want to get a little bit more used to the Canvas APIs. Um, you're not going to be drawing things to the Canvas necessarily, but you have to understand, like, what it is um, and, and just how you might interact with that with WebRTC or any other API or just, you know, what it does. Um... Again, going back to Canvas, I think, just think of it as like an image that you can draw to programmatically on the fly. Yeah, I've seen many demos, demos with Canvas, like spart particles and games. I have some really, really basic knowledge about these apps. Oh, God. I have basic knowledge about Canvas and WebRTC. I okay. have seen many <clears throat> many demos mostly on codepen.io yeah there's a uh, unfortunately a lot of the stuff is very much you know um, kind of dispersed around the web there's there's really no good kind of canonical place to, to find information about this stuff I think that the best that you can do right now is the Mozilla developer network or the MDN um, and that's probably like the, the the most authoritative source for um, you know information on the various web APIs. Uh, I will definitely check. So it, yeah, if you just like Google for MDN, it should just show up as the Mozilla Devel Developer Network. Yeah. Okay. Found it. Nice. Yeah. So. I think you got to do some reading, and, and, and I, I would say just generally, like, we've, I, I kind of just, like, brushed over, like, the high-level um, components that you're going to need to build this thing, but my advice would be to take it slow and kind of, like, just understand each component, you know, on its own rather than trying to figure out how it, it all fits together to start with because there's a lot of information, and you just kind of have to... You have to have been looking at it for a long time before it starts to make any sense. No. So I would say um, you you should probably get a better understanding of JavaScript itself. Uh, and as far as practice, um, I try and make some simpler apps um, that aren't necessarily like that don't necessarily involve WebRTC or WebSockets or Canvas or anything or anything like that. Uh, maybe Canvas that could be a good a good a good exercise, but. Definitely get a better understanding of arrays and objects, and um, I've, I've kind of explained the basic idea, but you know, it, you have to work with it before you really internalize it and, and are able to do meaningful things with, with these with these ideas. Uh, I think sure. there's something called job. So I know in the Ruby world, hang on, let me type this in. Um, I know in the Ruby world, there's this thing called the Ruby cones. Um, and it's K O A N S, and here we go. I'll just paste this to you. Um, I'll put this on the on the YouTube video uh, as well. And basically, it's just a set of exercises so that you can get more comfortable with the language. Um, 
and that should uh, hopefully get you more acquainted with things and make you a little bit more confident about building APIs on top of it and have a better understanding of how everything works. So go through those cones and uh, see if th that helps you out. And you know, once you do that, then you might want to start uh, digging into the various APIs on the MDN. Okay, I will check it. I actually don't <clears throat> buy bought the book by Nico C. Zakas for professional JavaScript for web developers from 212 um, from the last year. Mm -hmm. Just got to read it. And I found it, I found that very very interesting. The book oh, so you did read it. And ju yeah, just started. Why well, it was Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Nick Zakis is a really smart guy. Um, I he, you know, I, I generally trust what he what he writes. I know he writes really good code because I you know he's, he puts it on GitHub. So um, definitely read through that book. I think that'll be really helpful for you. Um, and I think that by the time that you get through that, you'll probably uh, be, feel more comfortable with the language. And one book that really helped me a lot was, it's called JavaScript Patterns by Stoyan Stefanov. Um, I'm trying to find that. Uh, mic when I type, so I have to like, can't type and talk at the same time. No problem. Um. I also have another book, Eloquent JavaScript. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. Um, let me just get this guy. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, um, Eloquent JavaScript is another really popular book, and um, some other people that I've tutored also really like it. So. I mean, you, you can read lots of books, and I think what you're going to find out is if you read enough books that you're, that you're going to start having a lot of overlap, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of something uh, you'll start seeing some repeated information because I think they all start from a, from, a, from a common point. So it really just depends on, you know, what appeals to you the most, but it sounds like you've got four good books. You've got Adi Osmani's Backbone book, which you might want to read later, um, but and you've also got the Eloquent JavaScript book, um, and also the uh, the one by Nick Zakis. So any one of those, like the Zakis book, or the Story and Stefanov book, or the um, uh, Eloquent JavaScript book, who I'm blanking on the author, but um, definitely read at least one of those, and then kind of move on to reading the Backbone book. Okay, I will take. <clears throat> I'll just I'll start up reading them. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for your help. No problem. I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah, if you get into those books or you know if you start getting into, into the project and you'd like some more help, just um, let me know. Okay, I will sure do. All right. Thanks, Damir. Have a great night. Have a good night. Bye bye.